A white male marketing VP at a North Carolina hospital was fired for being a white male. And in his place were two women who were hired. This is all part of the cult of die, the die cult, diversity, inclusivity, and equity. Now, they like to say day, but come on, if you got D-I-E, put them in the right order, right? Especially when you're trying to burn everything to the ground. This story is interesting. This guy ends up winning $10 million. Why? Well, firing someone based on their race is illegal, which is why the California Prop 16 was so important to the cult. A lot of people don't believe me when I tell them this, but in California, they tried repealing their civil rights legislation from their constitution because in California, they want to be able to discriminate on the basis of race. Now, ultimately, this would just lead to, you know, segregation and probably violence because the all white areas of California would also be able to discriminate on the basis of race. I'm showing you this Prop 16 first before we read this because people don't believe it. Because I talk to my friends who are like lefty and I'll say, do you know California tried to repeal their civil rights legislation that's in their constitution? They say, no, they don't. That's not true. And I say, yeah, it's Prop 16. California Prop 16. Repeal Proposition 209 Affirmative Action Amendment. You see how they put that in the title? They want you to think it's about affirmative action. The reality is they just want the right to be racist. A yes vote supported the constitutional amendment to repeal Prop 209, which stated that the government and public institutions cannot discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to persons based uh, persons on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity or national origin in public employment, public education and public contracting. Prop 16 was defeated November 3rd, 2020, 7.2 million votes in favor 9.6 9.6 million votes opposed. And I have to wonder who in their right mind would support this? What's saying is that the public, the government, cannot discriminate on the basis of all of these things race, sex, color, ethnicity. And they say it's for affirmative action. That's what it's really about. This is why these laws are so important. We do not want to discriminate on the basis of race. You see, right now, white people are in the majority in this country, and there are many white people who are racist. I certainly don't think racism is, racism is as pronounced as it used to be, but it's also true that there are probably a lot of people who are racist who just don't admit it because it's, well, widely unpopular. But in certain areas of the country, if the left gets their way, what would happen is balkanization. Now, of course, white liberals have outgroup preference, so cities— Mostly would probably just fire all the white people. And then some rural areas would probably just start discriminating based on the basis of race. Not entirely, but probably small stores and individuals who are racist are going to start using that to their advantage. Here's the story from the Daily Mail. A white male marketing vice president from a North Carolina from a North Carolina hospital has been awarded ten million dollars reverse discrimination payout from the hospital, which fired him and replaced him with two women, one whom is black. That's not a reverse discrimination payout. That's literally just discrimination (laughs) payout. David Duvall sued Novant Health in North Carolina, where he'd worked for five years as the senior VP of marketing and communications and was lauded by colleagues and supervisors in 2018. He says he was inexplicably terminated just days before reaching his five year work anniversary, a milestone that would have awarded him a higher severance payout than what he was given. He was replaced by two women. Kate Everett, a white woman who had worked with him and was promoted to take on the role of chief PR and communications officer, and Vicky Free, a black woman who was given the role of chief marketing officer. Duvall, in his complaint, said that while both women were qualified for the job, they were no more qualified than he was. His attorneys proposed that he was fired out of the clear blue sky because he was a white man and that the move was in keeping with the hospital's five-year plan to boost diversity by 2020. I like diversity. I like real diversity. You know, I don't I don't like the idea where you have all of the people of all the same opinion sitting in a room talking to each other. And, 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 and I can prove it. Ian on Timcast IRL. I know he's a white dude, but that's not my point. Diversity isn't about what you look like. Somewhat it can be because that can influence how you're treated in your perspective. But a lot of people are like, I don't agree with Ian and I think he's bad. And I don't like him. And I'm like, dude, 
there the semantic arguments on Timcast IRL. Okay, yeah, I, that's annoying. It is, and I'll tell Ian that to his face. I did at the event we did on Saturday. But the the moral arguments are important. If we just sit around all like libertarian like and be like we all agree, ha, ah, we're patting each other on the back. That's that's lame, man. That's 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 whack. Diversity is good when it's real diversity, but you don't fire people to achieve it. It's something you say we want in terms of I would like people of different perspectives and backgrounds to help us better understand the world we live in and potentially come up with ideas that we may not think of. That's a good thing. But that's not what the diversity, inclusivity and equity cult wants. The die cult just wants everybody to look different, but think the same. Isn't that interesting? For me, I'm kind of like, you know, I understand why racial and ethnic and religious and gender diversity are good things, because typically you're assuming that people of these various backgrounds have different perspectives. But those aren't the main issue when it comes to diversity. The mind is, your perspective is. And there can be someone from Eastern Europe who has a very different perspective to someone who is from Western Europe. Well, there you go. A diversity of thought and opinion. And that's why typically you can correlate you know, race, for instance, with diversity. The problem is the left does things like Black Panther is called a diverse movie. How is it diverse? Every, it's like mostly just it's mostly black people. That's not diversity. That's homogeneity. Yeah, because they, act, they, they don't they don't care. That's not what it's about. It's about a cult. It's about falling in line, doing as you're told. If you're a white liberal and you toe the line, you're good. If you are a black conservative, they'll call you a white supremacist. Nonsense. Well, here's what happens. His attorneys proposed he was fired out of the clear blue sky. They said he wasn't the only white executive fired. In his complaint, he says the chief legal officer, medical group president, chief information officer, patient experience officer, and president of Haymarket Medical Center were all replaced either by a black person or a woman in the 12 to 18 months after him. The jury agreed with him and on Tuesday awarded him $10 million dollars in a reverse discrimination payout. Full stop, Daily Mail. That's just what the law is supposed to do. That is a regular discrimination payout. Duvall had worked for Novant since 2013. In his complaint, he told he told how he regularly received rave reviews from his superiors and how his team was always rated highly for their performance, too. In 2018, he said he was unceremoniously fired without prior warning and without any explanation as to why that promised uh, that why that promised normal circumstances did not apply novant terminated him on july 30th 2018 and ordered him off the premises immediately 5 days before his 5th work anniversary jesse curitan notif- notified plaintiff of this decision and offered no explanation for it stating the decision had nothing to do with his performance that he had done everything asked of him and more the lawsuit reads Novant denied the allegations and said he was fired for other reasons that were presented at the civil jury trial. One. So here's a jury North Carolina Wednesday rule. Duvall should be given $10 million. This is amazing. Has plaintiff David Duvall proven that his race and or his sex was a motivating factor in the decision to terminate him? Answer. Yes. If you answered no to question one, do not answer the remaining questions. They say two. Has Novant Health proven that it would have made the same decision to terminate David regardless of his race? No. What amount of punitive damages, if any, should be awarded against Novan Health? Ten million dollars. <laughs> how do people come up with these numbers? I got to be honest. I guess it's based on how much money he was making per year. It's been three years. Punitive damage means, you know, you're, you're penalizing them. But ten million dollars. Wow. Man, what are you going to do with that, David? I hope you enjoy it. You've earned it. In its original response to the lawsuit in 2019, Novant Health said he was fired due to his deficient performance, including his inability to communicate effectively before a group and the delegation of the critical duties of his position to his subordinates. Novant says Everett was already doing much of Duval's job because he pawned it off to her and that it was natural for her to be promoted. It also denied his allegation that other men were fired for being white males, but didn't go into detail about why they were replaced. The jury sided with Duval on Tuesday, awarding him the huge payout. The hospital in a statement told Daily Mail, we are extremely disappointed with the verdict as we believe it is not supported by the evidence presented at trial, which includes includes our reason for Mr. Duvall's termination. We will pursue all legal options, including appeal over the next several weeks and months. Novant Health is one of thousands of organizations to put in place robust diversity and inclusion programs. 
which we believe can coexist alongside strong non-discriminatory policies that extend to all races and genders, including white men. It's important for all current and future team members to know that this verdict will not change Novant Health's steadfast commitment to diversity, inclusion, and equity. Hey, they did it. They did it. Look at this. This is a quote from Novant Health. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we got, this is big. In a quote from Novant Health, they said diversity, inclusion, and equity, D-I-E, die. Oh, it's amazing. Novant's Health, let me, let me read it again. It's important for all current and future team members to know that this verdict will not change Novant Health's steadfast commitment to die for all. Excellent. Luke Largus, or Largest, Duval's attorney told DailyMail.com that he is not opposed to diversity and inclusion and even sat on a committee at the hospital to promote it. He says the facts of the case speak for themselves. Mr. Duval was committed to DNI, set on a system committee to promote it, and his team created marketing materials. The case is about the fact that you cannot fire people just to create opportunities to fill positions. It is not a case against diversity and inclusion. Well, I will also say bravo, good sir, for bending the knee and giving in to the cult. Because ultimately they came for you. Now, fortunately, there are still laws in place that protected you. So you're lucky. I suppose that the law still stands. But if you keep bending the knee to the cultists, eventually these laws won't exist. Because as I pointed out, California is already trying to eliminate these laws. Here's what they say. California and the leftists, you know, the California leftist Democrats and the national Dems who supported this are just like, we just want affirmative action and say, you can't discriminate. What we're really trying to do is say that we should help someone get into college. You know how that will manifest. They'll go to a company in California. They'll go to a public sector, you know, institution. Then they'll say, hey, white man, you're fired because we're allowed to do that now on the basis of race. Isn't that interesting? Now, what do you think will happen in in the whiter areas of California? This is what I ask my my lefty friends. I was actually on a phone on a phone call with a, a good friend of mine who's a die hard die cultist. And we haven't talked in, in, in two years. It's kind of sad, really. But watching a friend fall to the cult is scary. It really is. You know, these people live. The, the, the reason why I say it's a cult for sure is one big reason. They'll accuse everyone outside of the cult of being in a cult. But you take a look at like Timcast IRL, where it's me, a moderate lefty libertarian type, not super far left, just fairly moderate. Then you've got Luke Rudkowski, who's kind of an ANCAP. He doesn't like to admit it, but he's like a free market capitalist, libertarian type Bitcoin guy. And then you have Ian, who's just all over the place, fairly middle of the, fairly middle of the road on a lot of issues, but also sometimes lefty authoritarian on some issues. You have Lydia, who's a conservative. And we all sit in these rooms and we disagree on a lot of things, especially pro-choice versus pro-life. And we have Seamus, for instance, from Freedom Tunes on the show very often. And this guy... Catholic, religious, and he's a good friend. And we laugh together, we make content together, and we, we have some real disagreements, but, you know, we learn to live together, and we find, we find what we have in common, and we have important things in common, even when we disagree on a lot of core issues. You know, he goes to Mass on Sunday, we don't, we went to the movies. But we're cool about it, and he's cool about it, and we get along just fine. But I'm talking to a friend of mine, and they're, they're absolutely convinced that everyone else is in the cult. They live in this world of a homogenous cult worldview. And anyone outside of it is a cultist, is wrong, is racist. And I'm like, clearly that's not true. There are black conservatives, many more as of late. But anyway, I digress. I'm talking to this friend and I asked this person, do you think that there are people in California that are racist? And she says, yes. Okay. Do you think that there are areas of California that are overwhelmingly white, like a city or county? She goes, yeah, of course. Like Los Angeles is very white, very white and Latino. But there are some areas in like central and northern California that are like 99% white. Okay. Do you think that in these areas that are overwhelmingly white, these people are racist? And she said, yes, I do. And I said, okay, do you think that these overwhelmingly white jurisdictions full of racists will use the ability to discriminate on the basis of race and sex against people of color and women? And she paused for a second and then said, yeah, probably. And I was like, then why would you allow this? Is this going to make one good thing for your university, but create 20 bad things across the state? Explain. She didn't really have an answer. And that's the issue. 
if they get rid of this, I firmly believe there will be white racists in California who would do racist things. And there will be lefty racists because they're all kind of racist. I don't want to. Ryan Long has a joke. I'm going to spoil his whole set. But he's basically the gist of it is there's there's I think it was Ryan who was saying this. Maybe it was Danny. But uh, that there's two kinds. I think it was Ryan. There's two kinds of um, racists, you know, that we, we really don't like. There's like the leftist, you know, racists who are like all white people have all this power and all this other stuff. And you're like, you know, like white people are bad and, and evil. And if you're born white and whiteness and you're kind of like, you're kind of crazy. Leave me alone. And then you have the other kind that really think white people are like superior. And you're like, you're also crazy. I don't have anything to do with you. And that's it. Like these are the extremes we get. Well, look, the alt-right is not particularly prominent. White nationalism is not popular because people in this country genuinely believe in like liberty, freedom, civil rights. The only problem is you have a cult. Let me show you. Let me show you the cult. From Adweek. Why your chief executive officer should also be your chief diversity officer. What? Chief diversity officer? The you talking about that I'm going to hire someone at the C-suite level for my company whose only job is to check the skin tone of my employees? That is fucking insane. I won't do that. Now, I'm the CEO, so I guess they're saying I should be the one to check the skin tone of my employees. That's insane. That's it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's the CEO's job to make sure that die is central to everything the company does. What? My company's mission is to make content. Okay, we do news. We do commentary. We are producing entertainment and they're different. We have opinions. My goal is to make sure the company functions. The bills get paid on time. People are getting their salaries that the machine is functioning properly, and I lead the charge, making executive decisions on what we should and shouldn't be doing. There is no one at my company whose job it should be to pull out color swatches and hold them up and say, mm, this person's a little too much on the light side. That's insane. But that's what they're doing. So I remember when I was reading about chief diversity officers, and you know what it is? It's like a party member. In, in communist China, they have party members in the businesses. Really, what we're seeing is Democrats and, the, and, and some established Republicans realize that the Chinese state capitalist method, which is it's, it's, it's a fusion of communist dictatorship and capitalism, they realize like this is effective, man. You know, China can go in and just enslave people. Gets the job done, right? Yeah, it's horrifying. But these politicians in the U.S. realized, wow, why can't we do that? Build a highway overnight? All you got to do is take away people's rights to get it done. So what do we do? Well, in China, party members join companies. If a company gets too big, then you have to have a communist party member division that oversees what you're doing. In the U.S., we have the same thing, but they're called chief diversity officers. Their only job is to enforce ideology. It may as well be the corporate chaplain to enforce the, the, the non-theistic religion. So I looked it up. Chief diversity officer. Where does this come from? Historical background. The chief diversity officer serves an executive level leadership role. According to Billy E. Vaughn, a history of cultural diversity pioneer work conducted by university professors, cultural diversity consultants, and human resource officers precedes the chief diversity officer. Less than 20% of Fortune 500 companies employed diversity officers in 2005. But that number has grown considerably since then. Only recently has there been a discussion about the appropriate background education and credentials the diversity officer needs. In the business sector, the role remains tied to human resource management functions. Higher education, chief diversity officers tend to have doctoral degrees. So I decided to look up the history of this Wikipedia page. Created September 2008. It's been coming. Look at this. They say, created page, chief diversity officer, speedy declined. The current version is fine. Remove top header, blah, 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 clarified description, and we're off to the races. Chief diversity officer did not exist on Wikipedia before 2008. Now, Wikipedia is not that old. I get it. So there's a lot of things that weren't on Wikipedia going you know, far back, but this is still something very, very new. In fact, let's just do this. Let's do CEO. CEO on Wikipedia, chief executive officer, and we'll view the history. Just because I want to be fair, it's entirely possible that they all just go back to 2008, right? 
Let's see how old chief executive officer is on Wikipedia. Okay, I guess you can't actually go back far enough because there's too many edits to it. Oh, well, I'll leave it there. Wait, hold on. Yeah, you can't actually go back far enough. You can only view the, uh, let's see if I click oldest, what will happen? Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm doing this in real time. There we go. There we go. Oldest. 2002. CEO. And it probably has a lot to do with the launching of Wikipedia and the expansion of it. The reason I highlighted when chief diversity officer was made, because that's around the time we started to see in LexisNexis, the, the uh, race cult, the, the critical race theorist cult and the intersectionalist cult growing. That's when we saw the words racism and white supremacy and all these things, all these things skyrocket in newspapers. So it, stand, it seemed obvious to me that that's when we'd see the chief diversity officer expand. I will now predict for you the future. You've been warned. If this is not stopped in its tracks now, the United States will be communist China. We will have the, the, the cult of diversity. It is nebulous. It's not the same as the Communist Party, which has a you know, formal function, but there will be diversity officers and companies. They will effectively serve like Communist Party members. They will control the ideology of the company and make sure you do as you're told and you will live under a boot. They'll go knock on your door and arrest you if you speak wrong. Think we are going in that direction. Pay attention now. This man won $10 million. But it seems over time, the die cult is expanding and it's growing. If you don't speak up now out of fear of not having food, well, good luck because there's already food shortages. And they say, but I got to feed my kids. I can't risk my job. Oh, that's, that's fine. Because, um, you know, it, it was Ben Franklin who said those would give up their freedom for a little bit of security, deserve uh, neither, neither, and will lose both or something to that effect. And I'll add one now. Those that would sacrifice the lives of their children for a short term gain deserve neither and will lose both. And what I mean by that is the future of your children is in jeopardy. You might be able to get them that sandwich today, but haven't you been paying attention to what's been going on? Over the past two years, it's been almost two years, almost two years of this. Isn't that crazy? It's been almost two years we've sat through this, this, this insanity. And now your children are worse off for it. You could have said no. You could have said no right in the beginning. But you thought that you could comply your way through this and it was just a storm. Now we're realizing that it's not just a storm. No, this is something that's going to last a long time. And you have an opportunity now to speak up and just say, I will not comply. But you're worried that you won't be able to feed your children if you do. It's possible. And I'll just tell you this. If you don't, you certainly won't be able to feed your children in the future because you will own nothing and you'll be happy. You'll probably be happy because they'll chuck you full of some kind of antidepressant. But hey, at least your kids will have had the chance when they were young to eat. And when they grow up, they'll get to live on their knees to fillet the state. Have a nice day, everybody. No, no. I'll see y'all at 4 p.m. in the next segment over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see y'all then.